Can you fast to be with Christ? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Father Angel from the Mission of San Andrew in Tijuana, Diocese of Mexico of the Orthodox Church in America. Welcome to the Gospel for August the 8th, 2020, according to St. Matthew. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for the crowd, because they have been with me now for three days, and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, for they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in the desert to feed so great a crowd? Jesus asked them, How many loaves have you? They said seven, and a few small fish. Then, ordering the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and after giving thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all of them ate and were filled, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Those who, have, who had eaten were four thousand men, besides women and children. After sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magdala, of Magadan. Glory be to thee, O God. Glory be to thee. There is something that we many times pass over. The crowd that were with the Lord had been with him for three days already. And that steered the compassion of the Lord, that he might feed them. He did not choose to feed them, neither the first day nor the second, but the third day. Does that mean anything? It means a lot. It means that you are following the Christ and that you would be willing even to fast, if necessary, in order for you to hear his words. That his words are so precious, that are even more precious to you than food. And that is the predisposition of your heart, of your conscience, towards God. It is futile for us to want to grab the Holy Bible and just start reading it according to whatever I want. Like that foolishness that some people say, and they even call themselves saints, that you should take the Bible and open it up. Oh, are you sad? Okay, open it up anywhere and just start reading anywhere. And uh, are you happy? Open it uh, oh, some other way. No, that is not the way. Not at all. Because today we're being taught that they were with the Christ for three days already. And then he became compassion. He was compassionate. He, was, he felt compassion for him, for them. That's when he decided to heal, to, to nurture them, to give them something, some food. Now we know clearly that this is the prefiguration, this is the forecast of the Holy Eucharist, of the sacred mysteries of the body and blood of the Christ. That is the uh, rigority, the rigor of him breaking the bread that the disciples are taking to him and giving it back, not directly to the people or to any assistant, but to his disciples. So the uh, disciples are the only ones that are able to handle that. And the disciples then give it to the people. We have to remain with Christ long enough that we might be made worthy to receive the mysteries of his holy body and blood. And you cannot do that anywhere other than in the Holy Orthodox Church. Yesterday I was talking about those that used to be an apostolic see, but because they became a den of thieves, have forfeited the presence of the Holy Spirit. And thus they are unable to receive. They just stop being in the presence of God. They are unable to receive or to prepare the holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is only within the Orthodox Church that you will truly receive them. And you cannot come to our church being a Roman Catholic, even if you are baptized or whatever it is, and 
demand that we will give us, we will give you the mysteries. We will not give it we'll give them to you unless you become faithful. If you become faithful to Christ, what will happen is that you will become orthodox. For that process to happen, your heart has to be cleansed by you remaining with Christ. You have to start seeing the wretchedness of lies and throw them away. You have to start following the Christ faithfully that you might be transformed into a faithful follower of Christ. And then you will be made worthy by God himself, not by grace. Not that you will be in grace. No, we always remain sinners. But by the mercy of God, we are granted those mysteries, the flesh and the blood that hang on the cross, the very same. How can that be? It's beyond our knowledge. That's what the Lord said, and I believe. That's enough for me and for millions like me. Only then will you have life. May God grant it to you. For blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.